If God is all-powerful and good, then why is there so much suffering? This question is older than Job in the Bible, who makes the mistake of concentrating on the nature of suffering rather than the power of God. The answer lies in God's sovereignty and omnipotence, because the question is, how does God carry out his purposes? Some theologians regard God like a puppet master who moves every person and every atom exactly as he wishes. Others liken him to a chess master who manipulates some pieces in order to encourage or constrain other pieces to move into the positions he's planned for them. Still others think that God is like a great warrior who fights the negative forces and enables people to move in the directions that he wants. All three strategies will result in God achieving his plan and, of course, he can use any strategy that he wishes. But which is the most biblically accurate image of how he exercises his control? The Bible includes texts that seem to support all three. The best way to understand is to look for texts that could be interpreted in any of these three ways and then see which interpretation best fits the context. For example, we could interpret the story of the Exodus as God working like a puppet master because he hardened Pharaoh's heart and then punished him for it. On the other hand, we could also interpret the events as God working like a chess master, controlling coincidences so that Moses' basket floated past Pharaoh's daughter just when she was bathing. Or we could say that God acted like a warrior, conquering the Egyptians. This is how Miriam and Moses praised him. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. The Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hauled into the sea. I don't think Moses would regard the other two images as wrong, because he seems that God has no single method. He strategizes like a chess player, he controls like a puppet master, and he fights for us. Actually, Pharaoh is not a very good example of a puppet, because sometimes he hardened his own heart, and sometimes God hardened it. Pharaoh hardened his own resolve and God helped him stick with his decision. So Pharaoh isn't like a puppet because a puppet has no resolve. Instead, God is portrayed like a chess player who encourages his opponent to carry out an ill-conceived strategy. This doesn't mean that the view of a totally controlling God is wrong, but it isn't what the text portrays at this point. These three different viewpoints of how God acts imply different reasons why he allows his people to suffer. If he's a puppet master, we have to conclude that every disaster is intentional. If, however, he's a chess player, he could use disasters to move people into situations he wants them to be in for a variety of reasons. But most often, Paul regarded God as a warrior and victor, as someone who redeems and rescues his people from principalities and powers. In fact, Paul boasted about the suffering that he went through, shipwrecks, beatings and even stoning. God's sovereignty in the Bible is magnified when people like Paul continue to follow and trust him even though they're going through hardship. Meanwhile, we wait. We wait for the final victory and for the end of all suffering. Then we'll be able to peep behind the curtain and see how he actually did achieve his plans. God bless.